Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the LeadX Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Hello, everyone. I am Kevin Cruz. Welcome to the LeadX Show. And this is just one of the ways we are sparking intentional leadership in 100 million people over the next 10 years. Welcome. And if you want to stand out and get ahead in your career, visit leadx.org for the free course of the day and to check out dozens of training programs that I've personally created for you. That's leadx.org. Today on the show, I talked to a mega entrepreneur. And for those of you who've been following me for a while, you're going to laugh because he talks about you know why we need to take more vacations, and this year I haven't taken a single vacation yet, and we are in the second week of December. <laughs> and his advice, his challenge of the day, to my horror, is to create a to-do list. Now, of course, in my book, 15 Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management, that's like a big theme of my book, is that extremely productive people actually don't have to-do lists. They just put everything on their calendar and live from their calendar. I tell everyone, tear up your to-do list. So you might wonder in the interview, you know, why I don't challenge him on this point, or at least, I don't know, educate him with my brilliant wisdom. And there were two reasons. First, you know, this show is a vehicle for my guests' opinions, you know, even if I don't share them. It's not, you know, I don't want to trample on their message. This is an opportunity for them to share their message. And two, this was the 14th episode I recorded in less than 36 hours. And frankly, I was just too exhausted. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't make the interview go any longer than it had. But I say, accept his challenge of the day. You know, write that to-do list, prioritize it. But maybe next week, take all those things that are still on your list, and I'll bet a lot of those things are gonna still be on your list, and transfer them onto your calendar. And when you have to pick a day, a time, a duration for every single thing, it forces you to make those hard decisions. It's not foolproof, but you'll find you're gonna get a lot more done with a lot less stress. Our quote of the day, don't take too much credit for your children or too much blame, from Deborah Spar, the former president of Barnard College. Now, our guest today began his entrepreneurial career by undertaking what was then the world's largest commercial renovation project. He transformed 2.4 million square feet of space at the Harborside Financial Center in Jersey City, New Jersey, not far from where I live, actually. And he sold that project for $120 million. He was 30 years old at the time, by the way. He is the, also the founder of Tiger 21, which is a peer learning company for high net worth individuals. He's the chairman of the publicly traded company Carmana Technologies, which is a solar energy company. And his new book is Think Bigger and 39 Other Winning Strategies from Successful Entrepreneurs. Our guest is Michael Sonnenfeld. Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So I'm looking forward to, to hearing about your book in just a minute, but I have a tradition. Uh, all of our first guests, all of our guests, I should say, get the same first question, which is, I'm hoping you're going to tell me a time when you failed and what did you learn from it? Because I think failures can be stepping stones to greater things. We might not know where they're going. It might be painful at the time, but often we learn something that, uh, you know, makes us a little bit better down the road. Absolutely. Do you have uh, something you want to share with us? I, I do. I, I was very uh, fortunate to have my first entrepreneurial success developing a very large project in New Jersey, which I sold, my partner and I sold when I was uh, 20, when I was 30 years old. And one of the things that happens with young success is you really don't know what your limits are. And so I assumed whatever I would do next would be as successful as it was, as I was the first time. And so I started a business that turned out to be a terrible failure. And uh, the lesson that I take from that is, first of all, when you're successful, you're doing the things that you do well, but by definition, you're not doing the things you don't do well, and you may never know what things you don't do well. Now, when you do something else, if it turns out to be something you don't do well, 
it's a painful but very important lesson. So my point is that when I look for people who I would like to hire or join uh, an enterprise, I want people who have failed, not people who have just succeeded. Because until people have failed, they don't begin to know what their limits and actually what their unique strengths are. So the part that I would say is failure is a key part of success. Well, I love that story. And partly because I also sold my business, the first time I sold a business when I was age 30, but I had failed twice before in my early 20s. And the CEO, uh, Rudy Carson, when he was evaluating the company, he says, Kevin, part of why I want you is because you've already failed a couple of times. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. So there's a lot to that. Michael, your new book is Think Bigger and 39 Other Winning Strategies from Successful Entrepreneurs. So let's start with the obvious. Why should we think bigger and how do we go about it? Sure. So uh, it's a great question because we have a member, uh, a, a man who is one of our facilitators in Washington named Cal Simmons, and he's kind of Mr. Venture Capital in Washington, D.C., and he leads our two Washington groups for Tiger 21. And he's telling us, you know, when he started out, he made a uh, uh, he wanted to have a travel agency and he built this first travel agency. He was so proud of it. That was like his aspiration. A friend of his came in and said, Cal, this is great. Where are you going to open your second travel agency? He said, I was never thinking about a second travel agency. And when that person started asking him that, he started thinking, well, maybe I can open a second. And so he did. And it was successful enough that he could open a third and before too long he had 10 and then sold the business. And what Cal was saying is, you know, the the difference between great entrepreneurs and good entrepreneurs is great entrepreneurs are always just reaching a little further than they're grasping. They're always framing things in a little bigger perspective. And that is really motivational. It's not that they're so foolish that they want to be unrealistic and do things that can't be done. But think of the great entrepreneurs today, Facebook, 2 billion uh, people connected by an idea, or Microsoft with putting a computer on every desk, and uh, Amazon putting a shopping center on every desk. And uh, what you find is that the great entrepreneurs just keep pushing themselves to think bigger within the limits of the possible. It may be reaching beyond their grasp, but we're not talking about fools and saying, I can, you know, I can climb to the moon, but most people just don't have that natural ability. And what's great about entrepreneurs is you can learn to be a better entrepreneur by following certain steps. That's what I'm doing in the book is trying to capture what are those things. And almost anybody who has any level of entrepreneurial success, if they are disciplined enough and creative enough, can push themselves to think bigger. Love that. Love that. And and another one of your lessons in the book, it's actually lesson five, uh, you say grit beats IQ most of the time. And and let's start with what do you mean by grit? How are you defining grit? And why, why does that beat IQ most of the time? So first of all, I have to admit, I'm a graduate of MIT, undergraduate and graduate. This is the most painful lesson in the book because (laughs) uh, I'd like to think that intelligence beats grit all the time, but it just, it just ain't so. (laughs) You know, there's so many people who have amazing intelligence, but they don't have the disciplines, the fortitude and the focus and the need for success or ambition that defines the great entrepreneurs. It doesn't mean that you can be a great entrepreneur and be stupid or foolish. It means that there are many people who have high levels of intelligence, but it's the ones who mix good intelligence and even great intelligence with grit. So what's grit? Grit means you have the single-minded focus to continue to work an issue through good times and bad. You pick yourself up every time you fall down. When you hit a wall, you go to the left to get around it and the right to get around it. And you don't let the inevitable failures and rejections in life stop you. You know, most people who start out, they work on a project and when they hit a wall or they hit a rejection slip or they encounter a failure, they wrap it up and go back to a job. 
It's the few who have the grit to just keep going, pick themselves up, jump from ladder to ladder that really go the distance in the entrepreneurial world. Makes a lot of sense to me. And now the one I fear, you talk about, <laughs> you didn't like that lesson yourself. Your lesson 29 says, take a lot of vacations. And I'm embarrassed to admit, I haven't gone on vacation yet this year. <laughs> hey, well, you're not ranking high in my entrepreneurial scale, but you may be an amazing, amazing success. So here's, <laughs> here's what I mean. There are some entrepreneurs that we think of like a Steve Jobs who created amazing things. Most entrepreneurs are not inventors per se. They see a product or a service or a need and they say, I can do it better. I want to make the world a better place. But no matter whether you're sort of an inventor or you're just trying to make the world a better place, you can only do it at high levels when you're connecting dots together. You're, you're being creative. You're looking at things through a unique lens that gives you a competitive edge to accomplish things that others won't. And the question is, how do you get somebody's mind into a place where it can connect the dots? This isn't just a logical thing of A to B and then C. It's how do I jump from A all the way to M and then to Z? What, how do I make those nonlinear ideas work and scale? And so, you know, some people do it by prayer. Some people do it by meditation. Some people do it by analysis or psychoanalysis. But, you know, how many people have had these great ideas in the shower? You hear about this all the time. I was taking a shower and I had this amazing idea. Or how many people wake up in the middle of the night and say, I had an incredible idea. And if they have the discipline, they actually write a note down because when they wake up in the morning, they see at three in the morning, they had this idea. All of these are variations of what I would call vacation. What it means is you need to put yourself in a place that gets out of the daily grind, that lets your mind relax and free associates so that you can create great ideas. And so this notion of recharging and getting a little distance is particularly critical for entrepreneurs on whose shoulders rests the need to generate creative ideas that can allow their company to leapfrog over the competition or to create products that nobody else can figure out or services that do better. You need to get away. And that's what this notion of taking a lot of vacations, it's any way you can to free up your mind to be really creative is something that entrepreneurs need to really think about. I think that's great advice, Michael. And, and actually, prior to this year, I've taken a lot of vacations, a big believer in, in real vacations for recharging. And to your point, though, is I even think LeadX, I don't know what number startup it is, and it's only a year old. All of the creative ideas have come either when I'm on the treadmill or on an airplane, when I'm flying somewhere, Bingo. whether it's a business meeting, and I purposely don't pay for the Wi-Fi or the connection because I don't want the email, I don't want the instant messages. And there is something about getting out of your environment, away from the hustle and bustle, and then the ideas just start flowing in, or at least for entrepreneurs, I guess they do. Yeah, for the successful ones. Right, right. Okay, so Michael, I always like to challenge the LeadX audience. I say, you know, let's get better a little bit every single day. Let's try something new every single day. So what's something really practical, you know, one of your ideas or, or from your experience that you could ask us to try out like in the next 24 hours? So there's a story which I love and I'm not even sure it's true, but it's <laughs> true in essence, which is that a young man came to J.P. Morgan in the late 1800s and said, Mr. Morgan, I have a system, a foolproof system that will help you be more successful than you could ever otherwise be. And he said, well, tell it to me. He said, no, no, it'll cost you $25,000, which was an ungodly sum in those years. He said, young man, why don't you tell me the system and I'll try it. And if it works, I'll pay you. And the young man said, every morning, get up, Make a list of the 10 most important things you have to do today and do them. And it sounds so simple, but the act of keeping lists of what's important and keeping priorities, nobody who's busy and harried and has things pulling from them has the ability to juggle so many balls that at any moment they can take a snapshot and say, what do I need to work on that's most important today? And I find that when I get into periods of stress, if I'm keeping a list, what it means is that 
when it's late at night and I can't remember what's next, I might be working on the least important thing. But if I go back to that list and look at what the 10 items are, I can quickly see what's the most important thing. I only have a half an hour left in the day. This is what I have to spend the time on. I don't think there's anything more valuable than keeping lists and accomplishing the items on it. Fantastic. Michael, how can our listeners find out more about you and your new book? So the book, Think Bigger and 39 Other Winning Strategies from Successful Entrepreneurs is out. It's been out for a few weeks now, and it's available on Amazon.com. And the website is www.sonnenfeld.com, S-O-N-N-E-N-F-E-L-D-T, where we have lots of information about the book and the stories in the book and some of the speeches that I've been giving around. It's been an amazing experience to meet all of these people who are entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs. And the most exciting is how many people who are parents of millennials read the book and say, I have a 25-year-old kid or a 30-year-old kid who's thinking about leaving their job. I've got to get them this book because they have to read it before they jump and make the next move. Wonderful. And we're going to put that link in the show notes and, of course, articles wherever this interview goes live. Michael, thanks for coming on to the LeadX show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. I really appreciate it. LeadX family, that wraps up another mentoring session packed with advice just for you. Before I go, I hope you'll remember that at LeadX, we're on a mission to give free leadership training and professional development to everyone, anywhere, at any time. Visit leadx.org to check out our free course of the day and our weekly live webinars. And if you're the kind of person who always says thank you, please take one minute to go leave a rating for the LeadX show on iTunes because we're at 246 reviews and we need to get to 300 We get about two ratings a week, which is less than one per show. My heart is breaking. But big thanks to the new reviews from last month from Masahi, Annette's Guy, ZinTim69, Mike071966, Stacy H331, Kaplan and Carolina, Princess Rose Love, McGahey01, and Living with Intention. And of course, because leadership is influence and we are all leading all of the time, It's just a question of whether we're leading in a positive direction or a negative direction. How will you lead today? Today.